Welcome back to Football Up North Podcast. I'm Chris, and that's Kyler, and we are bringing you another preview from the Big Sky Conference because, I mean, that's really the only conference we, we cover on this show. Uh, yeah, anyways, we're going to cover the Cal Poly Mustangs this year as they enter Bo Baldwin's third year under the reins uh, to try and turn around the triple option team into the high-flying, scoreboard-breaking teams of pass that he has had at Eastern Washington and even that's you know some success at Cal. Uh that said, Kyler. Yeah. The 2021 season, not much of that. They went not two and nine. Good. One one and seven in the big sky. Started one and three, ended one and six. They did notably beat their rival San Diego and they did sell out their home opener, which was their first game with fans because they didn't have any fans for the 2020 COVID season. So this was Cal Poly's fans' first attempt to see the Bo Baldwin system. And uh, if anything, it shows that this athletic department and these fans are indeed ready for a winner in San Luis Obispo. What do you? What are your takeaways from the 2021 season for the Mustangs? It was difficult to watch. Um, I mean, they won against, you know, San Diego, like you mentioned, but like overall, this was still not a good team. So this is the trend, of course, when we're looking at the bottom three to start this show. Take 21, season 2021, throw it behind you and never look back. Um, This is still not Bo Baldwin's full team. I will say that. So it's going to take a while to go from that triple option to get the athletes to spread it out across the field, be extremely fast. You want to be big and physical instead of, well, Cal Poly actually ran a weird triple option. They were actually a very big and physical triple option where like the Kennesaw States of the world, they're really small, athletic and fast. Cal Poly ran it down your throat with full backs for days, right? So they were a little bit slower of a triple option team, but it's, it takes, you're looking at a complete, not just 180, complete 900 Tony Hawk, right? We've never seen this type of a transition uh, going from Bo Baldwin style to the triple option that they're throwback right there. 90 is a throwback. Tony Hawk, 900. So yeah, take the record, throw it behind you. 2021 for the spring and fall is done. This is where you're going to start to notice, does Bo Baldwin have the still, the uh, pedigree to recruit these Amazing high school athletes that no one else is recruiting, like a Vernon Adams, like a Cooper Cup, right? Some of these players that have just not just made their mark on the big sky, but made their mark in the FCS, the CFL, the NFL. Bo Baldwin was a master at finding these athletes. Can he do it at Cal Poly? Still yet to be seen. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm going to lean a lot on you on this episode being very familiar with Bo Baldwin because this is a guy that in theory, has all the pedigree in the world at the Big Sky level, the FCS level, to yeah. win. Well, but, it, I mean, there were high hopes. Uh, some people around the Big Sky thought that Cal Poly was going to be good under Bo Baldwin year one. I thought that was crazy. I remember yeah. telling people, no way. You can't – I don't care how good of a coach Bo Baldwin is. You're not taking, like you said, a slow, fullback-led triple option team. More of the old wishbone than the actual like modern for sure spread triples. Um, you weren't taking that system and turning it into a spread no huddle air raid type system overnight. And right, you're seeing the same sh- struggles at Sanford right now. It's basically what they're doing. Yeah, uh, not to get too national here for those people that aren't aware of such things, but yeah, I mean that that was a huge transition. I did think we'd see a bit more of a leap forward in 2021, and we did because they. I think lost every game in 2020 and actually quit the season. They were losing so bad. They basically had like one winnable game against like Idaho state and they lost by like 20 and they're like, if we can't beat Idaho state or be within six, no way we're beating whoever they had last on their schedule, like Weber or whoever. Right. But, um, so it is a step forward. Once again, a team at the bottom of the conference that did take step forwards last year, but still is in the bottom of the conference because there were, some really bad teams the last two or three seasons in the big yeah. sky. But it is it is crazy to look at who they've also hired. Right? It's not just yeah. Bo Baldwin. 
Their their assist, associate head coach is Paul Wolf. Yeah. He was a solid Eastern Washington, you know, coach. Uh, yes, kind of got playoffs. it all rolling. He's the one who people can say maybe started the initial incline, right? Yeah. Um, then they have Eric Meyer. People may know him. Mm-hmm. If you don't, guess what? Eric Berrier just broke his conference record for, for being, you know, the greatest career potential quarterback in the Big Sky history. So, I mean, if you're looking at this coaching roster, if you're an Eastern fan like myself, you you go, oh, it's cute. I like it. They're all Eastern guys. They're trying to turn Cal Poly into what Eastern was. And can they do it? That's still the question. But looking at the coaching staff on there, like, we love it at Eastern Washington. All these guys were big fans of. So hopefully they can do something. But uh, last year wasn't pretty in the spring and fall together. So we'll see what Bo Baldwin and the staff's made up in the next few seasons. 100%. It's funny because we talked about it, I think, with the Idaho State preview. We were talking about, like, it's not fair to judge just coaching staffs or coaching hires on – yeah, because what we are talking about the hire. On just yeah. the coach. It's important to look at the staff. If, if the Big Sky were to break up in the two divisions and do like north south, yeah, I'm assuming Eastern fans would be pulling for Cal Poly out of the south. I think that's the benefit of like a north south east west two division system. You kind of can have like a little crush on the team in the other conference yeah. for division because you're like, yeah, I'd like to play them in the championship game. I like those guys down there. If I yeah, we don't hate them once every four years. We don't right? hate them. No Eastern Washington fan hates Bo Baldwin. To be fair, does any Big Sky team hate Cal Poly because no. even like you, like UC Davis and Sac State, I'm not sure they care. No, like obviously it's a game to get up for, but I don't think that gets more heated than even like Northern Colorado NAU. No, they're probably the least hated, least cared about team in the Big Sky. Yeah, it used to be Sac State. I it used say. to be Sac State, but now it's not. Of course, they're yeah. probably the least cared about big sky team outside of maybe a Northern Colorado. And I, I don't mean that to be a, like a dig. Each team has some promise. Like if Cal Poly can get it together, they're in the best location in the big sky, right? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to play in San Luis Obispo? Dangerous. They got a fantastic facilities, cool, amazing college town. It's the away um, game. Everybody needs to like you schedule comes out. And you're like, yeah. what year are we playing at San Luis Obispo? Go, go watch a game at San Luis Obispo. It is a fantastic town, fantastic stadium, beautiful facility, uh, great weather. Yeah, it, it's a destination for a big sky. Yeah, I was pissed. Idaho was supposed to play there in the magical year of 2020. Hey! <laughs> now I don't think it's on the books till 2024. Yeah. So I've still yet to be to San Luis Obispo. It's one of the three big sky cities I ain't been to yet. You've not been to but- Flagstaff? No. Well, I've been to Flagstaff, but never to NAU. Okay, we should probably plan a, a trip together. Yeah, I'd be down. I'd go I watch you guys Eastern, or we could go for a natural watch and play like Montana, Montana State. Yeah, either one Maybe Cal Poly. Go cool support town. Bo Baldwin while we're let's on the Cal go, Poly. Let's team. go, Bo! Yeah, I'd go support Bo yeah. against NAU, or who knows? I might root for NAU. Who cares? But yeah, yeah. no, I've been to Flagstaff for... Uh, to see the Grand Canyon when I was a kid. And gotcha. It makes sense. There's even a university there. Yeah, it makes but, sense. Okay. But I don't I don't count that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I've been to Flagstaff, but I haven't like been the Flagstaff. Flagstaff. I stayed at a hotel and then drove to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> it's a cool town. Uh, anyways, but to the prettier sure Flagstaff's pretty in its own right there, Lumberjack fans, but to the most 99.9% of sane people would say the prettier location of San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo. Uh oh, hot yeah. seat level. Because it is a coach. Where is Bo Baldwin on the hot seat scale? Is he closer to the throne or closer to the recliner on fire? Uh, man, so we already did this with like Ed McCaffrey, right? Oh, we're uh, doing it for every single coach that's existed. That, we'll be doing it for Bobby Houck. And people will be like, what? Hot everyone seat. who's not a brand new coach. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're grading new coaches. Yeah. We're, I think Bo Baldwin's still safe, right? Um, at least oh. for now. He's the, you can argue he's the second most successful coach in potentially even big sky history. You know, you can say Montana's Bobby Houck, but he never won a national title, right? Bobby Houck just made it to one game further than Bo Baldwin three times or four times, whatever it was. But Bo Baldwin has the elusive title that no other current big sky coach has. So he's not in the hot seat, but 
if he has a few more down years, Cal Poly is going to start going, this isn't what we signed up for. We thought in that initial opening speech, he said, I'm not here to just win games. I'm here to win championships. That's what he said in his inaugural speech when he was addressing all the Cal Poly alumni, uh, you know, all their donors. He said, I'm here to do this year one, win titles. So everyone was extremely excited, and Bo's looking at Cal Poly going, well, this may be a tougher task than Eastern Washington to try and turn this thing into a national power. But Cal Poly has all the advantages, but I don't think he's on the hot seat yet. But if he has two more seasons like he has, it'd be weird to say – because no one thought this coming, you know, hiring Bo Baldwin, Cal Poly. Bo Baldwin, I think, is closer in the hot seat than Ed McCaffrey. I would agree with that because Ed McCaffrey. I don't think Northern Northern Colorado is kind of at that point. They don't Funny. demand success. And, they, and they've got that Michigan thing going. We're like, if Ed McCaffrey can't turn this around, who can? Right. And I know that that's kind of ridiculous to say when, like, we're talking about one of the best coaches of all time in the FCS saying the same thing to him. Like, well, Bo Baldwin can't do it. Who can do it? Well, the issue but, is uh, yeah, the Paul coach wasn't before. wasn't bad for a long time, though. Yeah. Paulie well, was a playoff well, caliber team. Yeah, with Walt, years. right? Wasn't that the old coach's name? Yeah. they Didn't they win a conference title in, like, yeah, they 12? Sh- yeah, they shared one. Yeah. Shared but they were, in the, they were in the but, Great yeah. West with North Dakota State bullying North Dakota State for a few years. Yeah, right? and that's that's what I'm saying is like they are that con- that team that like we forget because like they fell off a cliff and then Bo Baldwin is trying to completely change not just the culture but the scheme the schematics and there's been a lot of growing pains with that like you said it, I think he even thought it'd be easier than it is um, and so yeah I think maybe now people look at them as bad but this was a team that was competitive and like I said. I think that's why I put it as one of the notable facts of the 2021 season. They sold out their first game and they didn't have another home game for like two weeks. And then they still were only like a thousand five hundred shy of a second sellout. Like people in San Luis Obispo are excited about this team. And then even when they were like one and four, they still, still getting up almost were selling out. So it's like yeah. people want to watch Bo. I think the fan base is behind giving him time. There's they wouldn't have hired him if they thought he would like they had if they did, then the AD needs to be fired. Right. They had to know it was going to take a second, right? Like, yeah, there's no yeah. way that these guys thought he was turning it around year one unless they're no. absolute crazy people. Yeah, it's it's a completely different style. It's it's different than from like Bob Stitt to Bobby Hauk, right? Yeah, you knew it's not a big difference in terms of scheme styles. Yes, it is a difference, right? But it's not going from a fullback focus triple option to we're going to have five wide receivers on the field at any given time. And we are not going to just stand in the pocket or hand the ball off. We're going to spread the field. We're going to run. We're going to do some crazy things. No tempo, completely different style, um, which everyone has to adjust. And it's going to take time. The only difference is like, do they have the athletes yet in Bo Baldwin's third year to even still run a Bo Baldwin offense? It's, it's different. So, yeah, I actually do think he's somewhat on the hot seat, but not this year. Yeah, I would say exactly. Like we're on a scale of 1 to 10. I guess we didn't think this through when we were playing the game. I, yeah, I was going to say like six and a half. Like, yeah. He's still not like on the fence. I think he's still very favorable. I think they're expecting maybe some leaps forward this year, and that could move him up the spots here right um but i think, but I think one regardless he could go 0 and 12 this year or 0 and 11 this year he will be back yeah same i mean one i don't think how like they have the money yeah. i just don't think their alumni are going to put up the money to like do a buyout for sure so he's probably there for four or five years whatever his contract is but and, and he should be people should give him four or five years he's got the historic yeah. value he's got the success at every level he's been in because if coach. not i can guarantee this is exactly what's going to happen he's going to get fired a job like like brent vegan will move on and be replaced like at that i mean this is all actually a great scenario matt ants could leave north Dakota state because he gets the next promotion right like climb in and bell before him in three years Ents could very well be out of Fargo. Maybe Vegan goes back to Fargo. 
to be the head coach. Unfortunately, Montana State is a big job, but NDSU is still at this moment a bigger job. Yeah. Like Montana State would swoop Bo Baldwin. Like I think anyone that thinks that like, oh, Cal Poly fired him, he's dead in the water. Any the first big sky opening that comes available, Bo Baldwin will get another crack at it. Like that's yeah, or- probably, I guess, for him, the hot seat isn't even that hot because he might have to lo- leave the cushy life of San Luis yeah. Obispo. But he will be in Flagstaff, Greeley, Pocatello, Moscow. Hell, if or Aaron Best moves on, he, he could be back at Eastern, right? Or like, worst case scenario, an OC in a Mountain West job. Yeah, like he's he'll be fine. He'll land on his feet. I still think every big sky school with an opening will take a crack at him. Like they'd be they would definitely to. interview him for sure. If Cal Poly is dumb enough to fire him, like unless, like we said, he's gone five six years and is still winning two to three games a year. Right. Then yes. And even then I think you'll have some of your, like your Northern Colorado's that would still take a swing at him. Like maybe not your Montana States, your Idaho's, your Eastern's. Eastern Montana's. You think they bring him back? Yeah. If you have the success, right. Even if he was on five years straight of two win seasons. So was Bobby Howe at UNLV. He's voted as like the worst coach. That's in true. FBS. That's actually a really great comparison. And then he goes back to Montana. He already knows the system. He knows how to recruit, and he's back. Montana's back. So yeah, Eastern Washington would definitely, if Aaron Best is no longer in the picture somehow. Yeah, he gets the Wazoo job. or Hundred percent hires and moves. We down would to go San after Bo Bo. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Not saying Aaron Best is going anywhere. We'll right. Cover that in his hot seat episode. Oh. But <laughs> yeah, people are gonna laugh when we do like. Best and how can vegan yeah. vegan just took the team to their first national title game since the eighties. Hot seat. Hot seat. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's talk transfers in yeah. one defensive back. Isaiah Hogan from Cornell. Smart kid. Ooh, Always good to okay. have a smart kid. Transfers out linebacker, Aaron Cooper, North Dakota offensive lineman, Wade Willett, Sam Houston, defensive lineman, miles Cecil from Vanderbilt. Offensive lineman, Campbell McHarg, Oregon State. Offensive lineman, DJ Stuckey, UNLV. Anybody with half a brain can see what is happening. Uh, I think the offensive line is being gutted. Yeah, and these guys didn't like hearing that, that they weren't going to get playing time, and they left. Yeah. Um, I will say, I mean, Oregon State – Sam Houston and UNLV aren't terrible landing spots. Right. But none of them are going to like what when we were covering uh Northern Colorado, they had guys going to everywhere, like Texas AM and shit. Mm-hmm. And then even Idaho State, you had guys going to Washington and Penn State or whatever. It's like uh or no, they're going to Montana, Weber, and right. uh, Washington. Um none of these are those. But North Dakota, Sam Houston, Vanderbilt, Oregon State, UNLV. Yeah. You know, two power fives, two, one FCS, new G5 kind of power. North Dakota is meh. UNLV is, well, maybe Stucky is the bad transfer that you're like, <laughs> good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd say, like, this is also shows that there's buy in at this level, right? Like, right. Jalen Hamler left the team two years ago. Love that guy. Uh, you were high on Hamler. I was high on Hamler, and then he hit me up on Twitter with, like, a total pyramid scheme, and I was like, <laughs> unfollow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think this just shows there's some continuity there. There are There's buy-in from this team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Many other takes on the transfers in or out, or do we want to move to talking about the roster in more in depth? Let, let's talk about the roster. Let's talk about the roster. Like I said, you know what a successful Bo Baldwin roster looks like. I and do not. Here's the deal. I am looking at this roster. I am trying to find positives. Young? Okay. I, they are young, so I will give them that. Right now on this roster, right, we got Chris Coleman, wide receiver, um, grad transfer. He, he's a pretty good wide receiver. Chris Coleman was doing extremely well last year. And that's um, with a Spencer Brash quarterback who was not very successful. Other than that, I don't see a lot of positives on this roster. When I'm looking at this roster, this may be 
I, I don't want to be mean, the least intimidating roster or the one that has the least promise. Now, the good news is most of these guys are starting to be Bo Baldwin's guys. So, And Bo Baldwin has a history of finding these diamonds in the rough that no one's heard of, and he excels them to elite status. Maybe what I'm seeing is just a whole bunch of that. Or what I'm seeing is this is going to be another Cal Poly team that's going to have a really tough time being competitive in the big sky. I, I don't know. There's not an overly large roster, but they're also not small. I think their smallest guy is almost 190 pounds on the roster, right? Where yeah. every single team yeah. you're seeing 55 pound guys, 165. And you know, they're, they're rare, but with this roster, it seems like everyone's the same size. You know, you're looking at anywhere from six foot to six, three for a skill position being 190 to 205. That's about it. That's kind of what they are for an offensive lineman. They're not very large. They're anywhere from about 290 to maybe 300. Their D line has some bigger guys. Their wide receivers. This is where I'm more um, going to focus on like the wide receiver aspect because I've seen the wide receivers that Bo Baldwin has brought in. Like mm-hmm. Eastern Washington has had a plethora of quarterbacks, for you and but quarterback. they have had a plethora of wide receivers come in. And you're looking at one Super Bowl MVP. Exactly. And you're looking at some of these guys. I mean, six, two, six, three, six, two, six, one, six, four, six foot, six, four, five, 11 as a fast skill position, but still 190 pounds. I think their wide receiver unit, six, five, Jake Woods, a red shirt freshman. Uh, we'll probably see him this year a good amount. You know, if, if Bo Baldwin is redshirting a 6'5", 210 freshman wide receiver, it's because he sees some promise in him. That's one promising thing or great thing about Bo Baldwin. He doesn't redshirt people that he just doesn't think not ready. He redshirts people that he goes, oh, this kid is going to be an absolute terror and we need him for more years. I mean, that's kind of the goal. So let's develop this kid. Let's put more weight on him. So be prepared to see Chris Coleman, who's going to be solid um, as their speedster. Then, you know, probably see that um, Jake Woods in there as a true redshirt freshman. And then maybe another guy. I And it looks like them. Yeah, I wonder if that's his brother. Probably not. Yeah, they're both from Santa Rosa, California, Cardinal Newman High School. So Gina probably, Carlo yeah. and Jake Woods, it looks like they are both um, brothers. See them. My guess is they are going to be pretty fine on the tight end quarterback wide receiver spot. But yeah, looking at the roster, it's pretty underwhelming until they have these breakaway players or breakout players. Um, And I don't know if they're on that roster or not, but just looking at it, it doesn't look sexy. It looks like it's going to be the bottom of the barrel big sky roster, but I also don't doubt Bo Baldwin in finding these players. These are now, most of them are his true players that him and his staff were recruiting. And I've seen it at Eastern. He recruited some phenomenal players. So we'll see. So Idaho State and Cal Poly are the only teams in the big sky that did not have anybody make the preseason all-conference team. Yeah. Is there anybody on the Cal Poly squad? you can see making the all conference team. I think Chris and- Coleman, I think Chris Coleman has a chance depending on who's throwing the ball to him. Right. Um, he was already solid last year. I don't know his numbers, but I think he saw like 400, 500 yards and you see the big sky this year. A lot of quarterbacks gone, a lot of wide receivers that were at the top tier, like Lee Moo, Andrew Boston, Lance McCutcheon, they're gone. So yeah, he has a chance now as a first team all American, probably not. But Chris Coleman has a chance to be somewhere in the first or third team All-American for a wide receiver, um, depending on if they can get that ball thrown to him. I don't know. Their O-line looks a little undersized. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, My only takeaway from this whole thing was, uh, for those of you listening, you won't get this, but there's a guy named number 55, Keith Marker. You can find it on gocapolly.com. They colored in his shirt. He's a redshirt freshman, so he's been there. Yeah. Very weird to me when if, Very weird. Uh, for uh, context for everybody else, when you just go backwards, everybody else <laughs> is wearing a polo. Like everybody else 
if my screen would load, has a polo on. And then he is the only guy on their <laughs> roster when you look at it. They just – let's see if we can find him. 55. They look so undersized. He's just, he's just colored in. Yeah. Just colored in. Weird. This whole team looks so undersized. Yeah. Um, let's get to the headline portion. Cool. There weren't too many headlines here other than, like, are they growing? Yeah. Uh, so I start with one, like, it's a quarterback system with no QB. Right. Who do you think – Leader in the clubhouse going into week one. I mean, because it is impossible. I did try to do research on this. Yeah. They're, they're San Luis Obispo just does not cover this team well. There's like one article on them. It's behind a paywall. Right. I don't, I don't like them enough. So, so, so of course, Spencer Brash is probably their number one guy going into the season. But watch out for a redshirt freshman, Jaden Jones. He's listed as their number two backup. He is a Bo Baldwin recruit. Um, you know, he didn't play in, in the fall of 2021 or it delayed his eligibility, but he got some playing time. He played in three games last year um, as a true freshman. You know, he, he didn't kill it, but against Idaho State, he rushed for 28 times for 148 yards, uh, or maybe that was a, against the whole season. Um, 14 carries. So he's a true dual threat. Bo Baldwin quarterback, six foot one ninety. Look at the quarterbacks Bo Baldwin was recruiting. Similar size, similar athletic ability. Um, he's the number two guy on the roster. Probably Spencer Brash is still going to get the number one spot. But look for Jaden Jones to be maybe that quarterback who, if Spencer Brash isn't accelerating the program, maybe middle of the season, Bo Baldwin goes. Guess what? We're going to switch it up. Jaden Jones, here's your opportunity to shine. He's from Oxnard, California, which Eastern Washington used to recruit heavily out of that region. So we've had some really good dudes coming from that region of California. Bo Baldwin knows it. I think, yeah, Jaden Jones may be the future quarterback, and he still has four years of eligibility. He may be that one quarterback who can excel and change it. Yeah, for me, uh, I looked at this roster – and you're right. I it took there are some guys with experience, and then they have two freshmen, uh, like true freshmen. Yeah. So you have, like you talked about, Spencer Brash is probably the incumbent number 13. He's a retro junior. Yep. He went 145 out of 267 last year for 1,725 yards, 10 touchdowns. Got a little banged up. They played three other guys kind of in his stead. Richard sophomore, 14. Jackson Pavitt, 13 from 30. 84 yards, no TDs, one INT. Uh, then you cover Jaden Jones. 18 for 34, ran in for a touchdown, uh, and also had 148 yards. And redshirt freshman uh, Kalik Paulette, 22 of 50, 221 yards, one touchdown, one INT. But I believe that was against a better opponent. Then they do have um, another redshirt freshman that hasn't played in Bryce Wiener from Fresno, California. And then you have number 18, true freshman Kelly or Bo Kelly from Dana Point, California. I think you're right in the point that um, it will be one of these younger guys. Spencer Brash is just not his dude. I think he fit in. Yeah. Um, I would keep my eye on, like like I said, one of his retro freshmen or even this true freshman, Bo Kelly. Yeah. Um, he loves both. He Bo does love Mitchell, both. And Bo, Bo, Baldwin. Bo Kelly is a strong quarterback name. It's a, it's an ideal quarterback name. It is like if you were to like go to create a player on NCAA football, Bo Kelly three, you'd probably name him like Bo Kelly or Chris. I Hamm. probably and I probably would spell it B O. I know. Yeah. Bo oh yeah, you wouldn't do you wouldn't do the Baldwin way. No, I would go like Bo B O. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny we're when we're covering Nell in Colorado, we had Chase Bobo transfer out. Imagine if you had Bo Bobo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, that's, that's my it. new – Yeah, when college football comes out, that's my Road to Glory first character. Bo, 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 Bo. Solid. Bo, Bo, Bo. I'm picking uh, Cal Poly and, then, and turning and then, that program around. He'll obviously wear number three because it's has three to. Bows. Yeah, has to. <laughs> has to. Um, that's what I see on the quarterback competition. And then the last headline I just kind of tried to make up here, is there trouble in paradise? We covered it in terms of like kind of not really a hot seat, but maybe like – maybe he like left a chair out in the sun a little they're, bit. Like it's getting yeah. a little warm. They're bringing Kinlan in. 
yeah. for the the bonfire, but it's still on it's the side. Sparked. It's still wet. They're debating it's whether dry. it's yeah, they're debating whether it's for his chair or they're going to do like a luau or something down yeah, there. And exactly. Cook a pig. Like for sure. Uh, I don't think there's much trouble in paradise. Uh, I think he at least has two more years to turn this around yeah. with some kind of whatever that is metric is for Cal Poly. Right. So I was going to say the only thing I think it ties into is like he said the first headline. He's it's a quarterback system with no quarterback. He yeah. needs to find the next Eric Meyer, the next Eric Berry, the next Vernon Adams. If he gets that guy, this system is turned around. Like, yeah. They have the wide receivers in place. They obviously are restructuring their offensive line. The defense has had pieces for years. Um, if anything, that will probably degrade, but he will take a slightly degraded defense to improve QB1. For sure. So I I don't know if they're on the roster this minute. I would really keep an eye out. Oh, it kills me to say this. And I, I have no information on this. I've never brought it up. I love the family, and I purposely avoid these. If Jabori Gibbs wins the starting, starting quarterback job at Idaho, C.J. Jordan is a guy – could look to transfer. Yeah. I know Bo Baldwin offered him like day two on the job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of thought he was going to take him. I thought so too, but I yeah. guess he felt that Idaho was loyal to him. So he was loyal to Idaho right. or that, or they'll recruit somebody else. <laughs> There's no shortage of quarterbacks in Southern California. That's for no. darn sure. They'll find nope. one. And when they do the rest of the big sky, probably going to be a little worried. Where most of our quarterbacks come from. Yeah, yeah, you guys do get a lot of that. What was your last quarterback that didn't come from the state of California? Uh, you're gonna be Gage, this Gage year, was, probably? yeah, Gage was a um Washington quarterback, pretty sure. Was he? I'm trying to think now. Well, while you think, I'll use the all magical brain of mine. Gunners, Oregon. I'm trying to think now. Gage Goo Brood was from Portland, Oregon. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah, that, he'll be fine. Yeah. Um, and we, you, you actually covered my next little point here. Does Cal Poly have the wide receivers to finally execute both Baldwin's offense? Yes. Potentially, or, right? It, it's, it, they're, it, it's, they're bringing him in. It seems promising based off of what we know he brought to Eastern. All right, well, we've covered the roster. We've covered 2021. Cool. It is time to cover 2022. And give them their win loss predictions. All right. I know. I know. This is the best part. All right. Week one. L. They are at FBS Fresno State. L. Fresno State is a really good FBS team. L. Uh, I'm giving the L to the Mustangs and the dub to the Bulldogs. Those green jerseys on the side just look fantastic, though. They don't look bad. Yeah. No, they look good. But yeah, L, 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 L. They get rival San Diego. Uh, I'm giving them a dub here again. They beat yeah. them last year on the road. I think they beat them at home. Yep. I, I see no reason why they wouldn't. I think Cal Poly is improving and San Diego is going the opposite way. Yeah, they have more talent than non scholarship San Diego. Here's a big one. This could be if if at this point they are one and one, and they have a bye week week four. But at week three they're at South Dakota, which is just just outside the top twenty five. Right. They're at at the not the Dakota Dome. Yeah, this is the Dakota Dome? Yeah, Dakota um, Dome. I, I think, think it's an L. Win. I think this is actually the week after. Uh, San Diego travels to Missoula, though. Okay. I don't know if it matters. I'm still giving them the L. I think it's an L against South Dakota. South Dakota is really good offensively, yeah. and they're and decent. They're a team trending the right way too. Yeah. So. But Bo, if he, if for some reason this is a season where it's clicking, Bo Baldwin can be a South Dakota. If they but, beat South Dakota, the Big Sky should be on notice. Like. They, they, I don't think they have the pieces to string together like a Sac State did, like a, a consistent full post to post season where like their only loss was week one, the Fresno State. Right. But this is a program that like could beat the six bad teams and probably maybe sneak up on one of the six good teams. Yeah. So playoffs is probably not this year, but like if they beat South Dakota, they could be very frisky, but I think they lose to South Dakota. Yep. One and uh, two. Sac State, 
home against Sac State. I'm yeah, they're win. actually going to win this game. You think so? This is Sac State's letdown game. I picked this game exactly how you did last year. I picked Cal Poly to get the upset over Sac State. Um, I'm not doing it this year. Yeah, they're going to ride high. Uh, Bo Baldwin at the end of this is going to have a T-shirt that he's going to rip up because, you know, Bo Baldwin, he did the worm one time at Eastern. He's going to have a T-shirt that says, Troy, I'm still your daddy. So it's going to be pretty crazy. I've seen the T-shirt already made. So. Troy, I'm your daddy. I like a daddy ball game. You have them a two and two. Is, I am I not saying two. they're going to beat Sac State because they're better. Sac State is a way better team. Um, I just think Sac State, they're going to have a little slump up. They almost lost to Northern Colorado. They almost lost to Idaho State. Why can't they almost Didn't lose? Didn't you pick them to lose to Northern Colorado? No. Maybe? No, you did not. You did okay. not. Okay, no, safe. this is a slip up game. <laughs> they're going to be a little too cocky. Yeah. Uh, then they're at Northern Arizona. I'm giving the Lumberjacks a win here. I'm giving the Lumberjacks a win here. Uh, then they're at Idaho State. I'm giving Idaho State a win here. You know what? I probably did this opposite, uh, but I don't care. I'm giving Cal Poly the win here. Yeah, you did pick Idaho State against Cal Poly. Oh, I my know. gosh. And I picked them to lose to Cal Poly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. Uh, continuity, who cares? <laughs> uh, you have them at three and three. And then look I, at this brutal stretch. I have them at one and five. Uh, Eastern Washington at home. Yeah. Yeah, this is an L. Oh, I really want to be frisky here. We played Bold Baldwin twice now. The average but, game has been like 70 to 7. Yeah, but on the red. We played them down there. You're right. I, I'm overthinking this. I'm definitely overthinking this. Eastern wins. Yeah, we, we've won like a total of 140 to 12. At UC Davis, Davis. I'm even Davis. I think Cal Poly is going to either beat UC Davis or Sac State as like a surprise where we're like, oh my God, Cal Poly's back. And then, you know, it's the rest of the conference schedule. Just if like, they Ooh. beat Sac State, I mean, you had them beating Sac State. They're two and two. Hell, you have Sac State at three and three headed in the week nine. Good. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, week. Oh, sorry, week eight, whatever. Uh, week 10 at Montana. No, no chance. No way in hell. Uh, Montana State at home. No way in hell. Nope. Uh, and at Portland State, or home against Portland State. I'm going to go talk, with Talk Portland. this first. I need to think. I'm going to go with Portland State on this one. I think um, they've just been demorally defeated four games in a row where arguably not one of them's that close. Maybe one of them will be. Um, then they're at home senior night. They're like, let's just get over with the season. We're playing Portland State. Who cares? We don't even know where Portland State is. It's not a true state. Is this Maine? I don't know. So, yeah, they lose to Portland State. I'm going to really regret this. This is like one of the more dangerous ones because if they do have a quarterback on the roster. Then that changes of, everything. None of this will be accurate. I am going to take – I'm sticking with it. I had Cal Poly as my worst team in the conference. They go 1-10 and 10 and 0-8 oh and in conference in my book. Uh, with a solo win being against rival San Diego, Kyler has a match. Three and eight with wins over San Diego, Sac State uh, at home, and at Idaho State. Correct. So uh, that is your Cal Poly uh, 2022 schedule. Kyler, any takeaways on Cal Poly before we close this preview? Bo? Do you have a review to the preview? Bo, don't, don't kill your name. You're still the second most successful coach in Big Sky history. You're still extremely sought after. Don't do it, or else what we're just going to say is Eastern Washington is just a too well-oiled machine, and it doesn't matter what coach is there. And we all have faith in you, Bo. So do better than Chris's 1 in 10. Do better than my 3 and 8. Figure it out. So if if they do do, that does happen, your outlook, then should Sac State have hired Paul Wolf? Nah, nah. 
<laughs> all right, anyways, let's get out of here. We're wishing for the best of luck with Cal Falling. I think we can all agree that Bo needs to start Bo.